there are no forests on earth. When you read this headline out loud, even with the exclamation mark at the end, every sensible person will say that I'm out of my mind, and you will want to show me tons of photos with images of forests. I want you to believe that this is another trick. They make us think that this is a forest when you actually are looking at 30 meter bushes. This is total bullshit and nonsense, you will say to me. Of course we know what forests look like because we've all walked in them. Well, I expect that's how you will react and that's fair. But after watching this video, its headline won't seem so strange to you because you will reverse your concept of forests by 360 degrees. And now, first things first. We will begin with a well-known picture. Children see nine dolphins on it, but adults see two lovers. A huge difference, don't you think? Try to see dolphins on it and see how hard it is. Feminine fruities just won't transform into dolphins for most adults. And that's funny because it's the opposite for kids. There is only one picture, but we see it completely differently. What is more, children and adults can't exchange perceptions. Why is this the case? It is simple. Eyes see the way the Matrix ordered them to, but that's not the way the real world looks. Our eyes become traitors over time. We were blinded while in childhood. The outward world is quite different. We see things through prism of habit and experience. And this prism distorts everything completely. At 30 years of age, this prism works to protect your mind. And at 40, you could go crazy without this prism. Do you think I'm exaggerating? Look at this photo. I'm claiming that it is from a mesa that was formed from a magmatic melt from the Earth's depths about 200 million years ago. You think I'm out of my mind? Maybe you're out of your mind. You will understand soon. We'll come back to this plot of grass later. For now, remember how we bumped into this old stump. Sometimes humans even try to take photos trying to hug the unhuggable trunk of a tree. But really, think about it. Old trees are a rarity. They are all registered, they are tracked, and are being kept in reserves, like memorials of nature. There is an uproar on the internet about forests. Why all forests in the earth, even in Siberia, are not older than 200 years old? Where are all the giants? It is right that the people are in an uproar about it. But I want to look at the problem from another angle, from the side of the Earth's poles. The thing is that even Soviet biologists found strangeness in the poles and unnatural amounts of water kept in the ice and snow. And there's an unnatural percentage of carbon dioxide in the world's or oceans. This abnormal concentration tells us exactly about a worldwide fire of the past. Using simple math, those scientists come to the conclusion that those fires carried away 99% of the Earth's biosphere. We all know that living cells consist of hydrogen and carbon. So the ice and the pools are made mostly from water, from burned organisms. And now think about this number, 
It means that everything that now grows, crawls, flies, swims, and runs on the earth is 20,000 times less in volume than before this catastrophe. 20,000 times. To imagine this, look at this picture. This piece of bread is humans, plants, animals. Just this pathetic small piece of bread on this large transport truck represents Earth's biosphere before those times. I hope you understand that today's myth of overpopulation is just pure hoax and nonsense. 100%. But here's the problem. Biologists divided this number between all the continents and only calculated into this figure the dry land, not all the ice and snow that is on the earth. And there's a lot of snow and ice. Fact is fact. But as always, illumination can come suddenly and stereotypical thinking is to blame. 30 meter tall forests are like a virus that takes over both our brains and especially the brains of biologists, which prevent us from finding a solution to this problem. If plants can't fit broadwise, then we should fit them upwards and then it should make sense. In this new theory, hypothetical forests of unthinkable height were drawn. And here's the thing, we found these old photos. This is the vandalous felling of the sequoias in the California Redwood between 1880 and 1920. These trees miraculously survived the planet's bombardment in 1816. Just imagine how many years this tree needs to grow to these sizes. Then these terrible men come with saws and axes. One, two, and no more tree. In proportion of this tree, we can see a rule. The diameter of the stump is three times bigger than the woodcutter's or feller's growth. Let's look at this formula. You just think about it. You are entering a forest that is not, is not usually 30 meters, 100 meters. Here are your fairy forests from fairy tales and books. Forests that are lost because of such barbarians. I understand that they are just wage workers and they must feed their families. That this is just an order from above. But if every single woodcutter refused to carry out these criminal orders, all the forests would be saved because their demon bosses are too arrogant to do it with their own hands. And that is why I will send these merry woodcutters defenders to a well-known place. Look at this photo carefully. They look like satanic bacterias that want to kill the forest organism. For those who think that trees were killed just because of wood materials, I want to dispel your claims. Trees are energy generators. They produce constant electricity, oxygen from photosynthesis, food, they have a root network and are programmed to exchange data. Our ancestry had a theory that trees are programmed to keep data from everything on the planet and save it in their information portal in their carbon fibers. I do not know the reason, but some sequoias that these vandals left alive even put a fence around it and called it a wildlife sanctuary. Of course, park guides will tell you tales from the crypt. How in this stupid zoic era, stupid sores scratch their booty on the old sequoias of California. Let's summarize everything. Remains of the giant trees of the past are found. 
and homeless ice and snow of the poles took their place in the mosaic. It seems like everything is clear, but it is not. Nothing is so simple. If we take myths and legends of all nations, you can find lots of stories about people, animals, and plants morphing into stone. This is normal because paleontologists all over the world dig petrified fossils of humans, animals, and plants. There are so many of them that old museums are overfilled with petrified fossils of clovers, frogs, lizards, pieces of dinosaurs, and so on. Frogs and clovers are fine, but what about the forests? Guys, where are the trees? Old sequoias of California do not fit here because they are made of carbon. It means they are not related to the silicon era. Why do I know this? First off, they were cut and sawed by standard instruments. All axes and saws would break if they had to cut silicon. So where are the silicon trees if those giants from carbon are not related to the silicon era? Guess what? They were found. Guess where? In the same North America, in Arizona to be precise. Ah, this zone of the Aryans. There are so many things going on there. The giant quarry that is now called the Grand Canyon. Like one person under the nickname Wake Up Human said, it is an apogee of the cynicism to name quarry waste as a national park. It is not a national park. It is just a quarry. And think what the ancient Russian words root kolo is doing in the opposite part of the world. And the root ra, I won't even mention. Here is the city of Arians, from which left only the vortex that made hooligan meteorite 50,000 years ago. That's how Wikipedia is telling us this total bullshit. Oh, and by the way, here are our silicon trees. I wanted to introduce to you the museum under the open sky. Petrified trees here are just scattered in the desert and also fenced. Everyone today can visit this circus called Petrified Forest National Park. In this park, petrified fossils are not common. They are unique. If turtles and frogs were petrified in pale gray boulders, then this trees morphed into semi-precious stones. Beautiful stones, aren't they? It is time to take stock. All our forests are young and do not grow higher than 30 meters. Remains of fairy forests were found in the sequoias of California and biologists put poles of ice and snow in its place. We found petrified fossils of the silicon era and trees from precious gems. Now everything fits together, right? Or no? In a perfect world, everything fits. In our cursed hell, nothing fits. Since that time I, when I was a kid and I saw petrified fossils on a TV show, I was tormented by that question. How is it possible for a frog to be morphed into a stone? instead of rot, like any organic body does. Let's see what Wikipedia tells us. Special rare conditions must be met in order for the fallen stem to be transformed into fossil wood or petrified wood. In general, the fallen plants get buried in an environment free of oxygen, which preserves the organic structure and general appearance. I understand this is dry British humor. If not, I will try to explain. 
You need some spontaneous disaster. For example, a volcanic eruption, tsunami, clay rain, which would quickly cover the frog and mammoth and make concerts from them where bacteria won't decompose the corpse to the state of stinking manure. In other words, to make the body petrified, you need to cover or engulf the body and to compact it. According to so-called scientists, the tissue was organic and then it magically turned into silicon. SiO2. Remember this formula. If you have ever buried your home pets, you can quickly run and dig them out. Your beloved pet is petrified and you can put his statue on your table. Want to reproach me for such black humor? Redirect that to the official science community which sells us such bullshit. A dead body has only two options. Dry up like an insect in the piece of amber or the second option just simply rot. Organic bodies will never turn into rubble. Never. This absurdity is invented to hide the truth. Magical morphing into stone is a little thing. Transforming wood into semi-precious stones. This is where the lies and ignorance become uncontrollable. Tell me how. How a stick of wood can become a semi-precious stone. You may have no answer, but I do, and we will discuss this later. For now, let's analyze what these gems show. I do not know about you, but I am confused by three points. First of all, according to the official story, this, these trees lost in an unequal battle against a neighbor volcano attention 225 million years ago but wait there's more this wood not only burned and held fire not only rotted into the wet ground against all the laws of physics chemistry and biology just transmorphed into precious gems David Copperfield is nervously smoking on the sideline but this is not the end trees are not broken trees are sawn into even accurate pieces. Well, I want to know the name of this brand of chainsaw that Aborigines use for this. I'm joking, of course, but the conclusion is that this is not a museum, but stage theater. T these trees were sawn and brought here by someone. You know, only a true fool would believe in the magical transformation of wood into precious stones and gems. Here's another question. For what purpose did they make this circus with all these scattered pieces of silicon life form? And did you pay attention to how small these silicon trees are? They are incomparable even with the sequoias of California. But this one is simple. They are not trees. They are trees branches, giant silicon trees. And these trees were so big that American sequoias near them look like sticks near the baobab. And while tourists are freaking out over these precious gems, no one is paying attention to the background because everything is hidden in plain sight. To understand what I'm talking about, let's return to our favorite plot of grass. And I want to ask you, what do you see? A tree stump in the daisies? But I continue. This is Mesa that was formed from the magmatic melt from the Earth's depths about 200 million years ago. Do not believe me? And now, let me introduce to you, this is Devil's Tower, Mesa or so-called lacolith that was formed from a magmatic melt from the Earth's depths about 200 million years ago. At least that's what Wikipedia tells us. And billions of people believe that this is Mesa, lacolith, or a mountain. Really? Let's come closer to our tree stump. 
to look at his fantastically inexplicable columns. Let's look in the Wikipedia ones again. Igneous rock is formed through the cooling and solidification of magma or lava. Really? What a smart magmatic melt! It's just stood still and froze in the appearance of perfect hexagonal column for 300 meters in the sky. You can synchronize your instruments with these miraculous columns. Were they squeezed out of cream injector, then tied in a bun like a broom, and then a big giant fan blew near to help the columns to curdle faster? Maybe the columns of Parthenon or Isaac's Cathedral were built in the same way. Gentlemen scientists, are you out of your mind writing this garbage? Humans, are you out of your mind believing this garbage? Claiming that this geometrical masterpiece appeared as the result of a lava fountain is the same bullshit as claiming that a racing car appears on the track because of an explosion at a Ferrari factory. Have you ever seen what a fountain of lava looks like? In those times, lava had artificial intelligence. Really? Comparative analysis. All columns are hexagonal. Why exactly hexagonal? Because the universe's masterpieces are built in this form. There are no snowflakes exactly the same, but all of them are in a perfect hexagonal shape. Bees too, without the knowledge of mathematics, correctly identified that the regular hexagon has at least perimeter among all the other shapes of equal area, so you can fill the shape most efficiently. When bees build honeycombs, they instinctively try to make them as roomy as possible and spend as little wax as possible. Hexagonal shape is the most efficient economical figure for building honeycomb. Blind sheep cannot understand that our universe is fractal. That is why there is no difference in what scale you study it. In the scale of a mountain or the scale of a tree that everyone has outside their window. And now let's open a botany textbook. Let's find the structure of any plant and let's compare it with our giant stump. We won't go deep into this. We only want facts that fall into our hands from the stump's photos. So it will be useless to try to argue against those facts. I want to introduce you to the cross section of a stem of flax. Well, well, gentlemen biologists, are you noticing anything? No? Look, it seems like honeycombs in the middle. Wowzers, and they are all hexagonal. Well, well, what a coincidence. If we remove skin around this flack, our stump skin is the same. Let's look at the small rocks around it, and guess what? Flax looks exactly like our stump from the bird's eye. They look identical, exactly. The stump's fibers, like the fibers of the flax, has a hexagonal shape that is strictly preserved. It is geometrical the entire length of the stem, and that is as much as 384 meters. I want you to pay attention. The stump's fibers are even stricter in their proportion, as we learn from the botany textbooks. They are no different for the whole length, but are relative to each other. It is a branch of armature hexagonal cross-section after leaving the metal rolling mill. The fibers are not attached to each other since they freely exfoliate and fall as the stone erosion goes. Each fiber out of our stump is covered with a thin skin, exactly like fascia, a thin sheath of fibrous tissue enclosing a muscle or other organ. As you see, petrified skin contacting winds and moisture is cracking, exfoliating and showering, 
and this is direct evidence that the fibers of the stump consist of at least two components placed inside each other. Fibers do not go into the ground vertically. They gradually bend to transform into the root system like every tree does. As you can see, the official story of spontaneous and accidental solidification of lava is 100% bullshit and falling apart quickly. In 1977, Hollywood made a film called Close Encounters of the Third Kind, with Devil's Tower playing the main role, where we were told a hundred times that this is a mountain where we can meet aliens, but this garbage is suitable for fools only. But where were your eyes, gentlemen? Hey, biologists, geologists, paleontologists, are you here? Do you study the world in a welder mask? And now let's find out the height of the tree, which was a stump one day. Let's use the formula that I mentioned earlier. The diameter of our stump is 300 meters at the base. So if we calculate 300 over 20, we will get the height of, are you ready? Six kilometers, 19,685 feet. Just think about it. Everything is learned in comparison. I think we can put a big fat dot in here. Devil's Tower is a giant stump of a giant silicon tree with all the attributes of a normal stump that everybody's seen. But we should not underestimate the matrix that keeps all the cattle in the stables. I am sure that after such clear evidence, there will still be deep sleeping people who will ask for more. If you think that that's all my arguments, I want to disappoint you because I have so many trump cards up my sleeve and I will enjoy every moment that I will throw them on the table. Well, we figured out everything about this stump. Let's move to another one. Yes? And you thought that this was the only one? You just need to remove your blinkers and you will see so much. Let me introduce to you Giant's Causeway in Ireland. Notice something familiar? Take a closer look. Again, hexagonal columns. Wow. If you did not notice the similarity to the Devil's Towers fibers, you must be 100% blind. This is the same giant stump, but now it did not come out of the ground. This tree grew right on the sea's shore. The giant's causeway consists of almost 40,000 columns of such geometrical proportions that all the bees in the world would be jealous. Of course, all nerds declared it to be a national nature reserve. Like I mentioned before, as one person named Wake Up Human said, it is an apogee of the cynicism to name quarry waste as a national park. In which connection is quarry waste here? I will say later, but guess what the official science bleats about this Irish stump? Giant's Causeway is an area of about 40,000 interlocking basalt com columns that result of an ancient volcanic eruption. Volcanic eruption! Please tell me how to stay calm and not erupt in a fountain of swear words in the direction of this science society. It is hard, very hard, but I will try because our enemies only want us to do it. I have only two questions. First of all, how many years was C.C. Campbell in a coma? And second, why do bees honeycombs not declare it as a result of an ancient volcanic eruption? Because they are not distinguishable at all. It's no less strange why street sidewalk tiles are not declared as a result of an ancient volcanic eruption. Show me a single difference, nerds. And now I'd like you to come back to our old method and compare Giant's Causeway, but this time with real lava. I want you to remind you how lava erupts and flows 
and this is how it congeals. And now let's compare Devil's Tower. And now let's compare with Devil's Tower with Giant's Causeway. Oh, sorry for my French. I mean, let's compare Silicon Stump with Silicon Stump. Somebody still believes in the lava fountain? If I didn't know about giant silicon trees, I'd rather believe in a giant cream injector and a fan, but not in volcano garbage. If you think that these two giant silicon trees are the only thing that I can show you, then you are mistaken. There are loads of them on the planet. The funniest thing is that normal people do not realize that they are stumps. But official science realized that seriously, that they should find out how to hide these trees from people who ask too many questions and they invented a genius name for these silicon stumps the basalt cliffs. I want you to pay attention to these two pictures where fibers hang from the ceiling. How can volcanic version explain that? Lava was dripping, dripping, but its drops did not fall to the ground. The drops stuck by their hexagonal honeycombs to the major neighbor drops, which somehow reach the ground. Look at this picture. Just an everyday photo with this girl. It's good. But the only thing she does not realize is that she's sitting near the stump of a silicon tree. All artifacts are in plain sight, but the prism of the matrix do not allow us to see nine dolphins. There are tons of silicon stumps in the network. You can research this topic yourself. Google will help you. Let's move forward. I want to introduce to you one more hexagonal miracle of the Earth that is of silicon nature. I want to introduce you to the biggest salt lake in the world, Salar du de Ayuni in Bolivia. As you can see, not everything is so simple as it is written in textbooks and shown on the Discovery Channel. Our tradition wanted to show you what Wikipedia is telling us about these hexagons. But the fibers of silicon stumps, Wikipedia is l changing it a bit. About the hexagonal structure of South American Lake, it is keeping silent like a fish, like there's none of them, but they are there, absolutely there. You won't believe it, but Wikipedia is not the only thing that's silent. After hours of research, I found nothing about this hexagonal structure. And only in one place, I found a single phrase, like, look how interesting this dried and cracked salt. And then I fell into a stupor. First of all, under the blazing sun's rays, every surface cracks like this. But not in hexagonal shape, like honeycombs. Secondly, cracks are deepenings between the fragments of surface, but I see elevations. And this is opposite to the cracks. 
it looks more like fiber fascia, like the silicon stumps one. And the third thing, why is all the salt surface in exactly a hexagonal shape? If the official story is not a sensible explanation, let me tell you my opinion. As Wake Up Human says, there are no salt lakes, just sludge settling tanks. I agree with him, but this is not the case. And here's why. I think that you've already realized that honeycomb's hexagonal shape is an attribute that belongs exclusively to living organisms. Either is the possession of queen bee, snowflake structure, or plants fiber. As we see with our own eyes, Salar du Euni is not just a giant layer of salt. It was a living being of the silicon form of life which was scraped out by the adepts of technocracy, by their machines. Now you understand how far we are from reality? If we can't even imagine a giant tree, then how can we imagine a creature from salt 10,000 kilometers wide? Then the height is impossible to imagine. Now you understand that 7,500 years ago, our planet was so fantastic, fabulous and beautiful that Cameron with his avatar is a poor substitute. All that is left to us is a desert, which we have turned into a scrapyard. And what I mean by saying scraped out by their machines, well, to be short, while our society was sleeping in this matrix, working nine to five, hours a day. Doing useless things, dreaming useless dreams, our plant was literally being scraped out and they are scraping it out now with their giant graders and machines. I will show you later. Well, the theoretical part is over now. It's time for the climax and we're close to the runway. But before we should return to our first stump and see one strange thing. I bet you did not notice. We saw many stumps, but this one is special. It has a flat surface on top, which means it was cut down. Yes, exactly, cut or sawed. And now our imagination is asking us, who cut it? For what? What did they cut it with? I will answer this question later. We will put these questions in the background because the stump that was cut is not a single one on the planet. I will tell you even more. Devil's Tower is a small one compared to the others. Boys and girls, our aircraft is ready to fly. Of course. Well, we have no course. We will fly around the planet. Fasten your seat belts and better hold on to the handrails because everything you will see will overturn your notion of rocks and mountains. Let's go! While we're flying, let's play a game. Find 10 differences. Though, there are only two differences. Material and size.
these stumps are sticking out everywhere on the whole planet. There are hundreds of them. Scientists call them mesas, which means table in Spanish, because they have a flat peak, flat as a table. Well, cool, stumps. And now let's remember the beginning of our conversation. We thought we saw forests and even walked in them. So what does it matter if they are only 30 meters high? Is there a difference? We're pleased with the one we have left. We enjoy its beauty. We are accustomed to these forests, so we don't need another. Then we discovered that the old forest was preserved in the U.S., which is described in fairy tales and myths, giant 100 meter sequoias. This is the picture our mind draws when we hear the words fairy forest. Let's think about the sequoias in California and the prism of matrix forces, otherwise our mind's protectors will melt because Devil's Tower is actually a six kilometer high tree. But realize that Devil's Tower is a young plant compared to other trees on our planet. For example, this mountain in Cape Town in Africa is really impressive. This plateau is three kilometers in diameter if we multiply 3 by 20, we will get a tree of 60 kilometers high. Do you have any clue how big its branches are? On one of the branches, you could easily place a huge residential area with all the shopping malls, schools, and parks. Just imagine how huge it is. Of course, your mind will never see that this mountain in Africa is really a tree that is 10 times higher than the Devil Tower tree, 60 kilometers higher. But guess what? That's not the limit. In the work of Russian scientist and poet Alexandra Sergeyevich Pushkin, we can read about giant fairy oaks that was on the Bayan Island near Lokomori and we now believe has been killed by our government. That oak was supposed to be at the center of the earth and was some hundred kilometers high. Not sure how high, but for sure higher than the Cape Town one. This oak was the biggest plant on earth. Remember in the beginning I mentioned our prism of the mind that helps to preserve it but distorts reality? Ask any person to show you trees on the right photo and he will immediately put his finger on the green on the ground without noticing that it's only pathetic bushes. It looks more like moss in comparison to this size, but definitely not a forest. Now you understand why we can't find nine dolphins, but do not dwell on fish and stumps. Once again, I urge you to think in planetary sizes. If instead of dolphins and stumps, we see lovers and mountains, imagine what is hidden from us with a curtain. That is why the apocalypse is translated as curtain opening. Do you understand now why I mentioned this matrix prism in the beginning? Through which we are looking and it turned out that we see nothing. The real world is different. I can call today's state of society a real dream and the sad part is it is not figurative. You know, in the Russian language, the word tree is spelled D-E-R-E-V-O, D-R-E-V-O. The word ancient tree is spelled D-R-E-V-O. And the word ancient trees is spelled D 
de revnost. It means in Russian language, the language of the Aryans, time when giant old trees grew. Interesting, isn't it? Well, let's put all that in our pocket and continue our flight. I think you will ask me, and maybe it's time to ask questions. Who cut down this forest? Why did they cut it? What did they use it for? No, it is too early to ask that. We know that the whole face of the planet was covered by giant vegetation. So we can ask ourselves, where did all the other forests go? The thing is that this so-called mesa are just single ones because only the best were chosen for cutting. Whole other forests of the planet were laid down by blast waves. We reviewed only stumps with flat peaks. Does anyone remember how not cut but actually broken trees look like? I will remind you. Understand my hint? Let's play the game again. Find 10 differences. I think you understood the meaning of my words. So I want you to look at the highest stumps of our planet. They were mined like a quarry and were broke by blasts. For example, the tree Everest. Have you already guessed? There are no such things as rocks on our planet. They are all just pieces of broken stumps. You can look at millions of photos, but the only thing that you will find is corpses of our true environment. How official science explains our origin of rocks, I think you guessed too. Now you understand why we are so charmed by rock? Why are, are all elite properties placed between rocks? Why the most clean materials for construction are pieces of rock? Because even if they are dead, they still emit powerful energy for us, mortal carbon human beings. Stone is a bridge between silicon and carbon life forms. And now, the important thing you must learn is how to distinguish rocks from mountains. They are completely different things. Rocks consist of solid pieces of ragged stone with fragments of fibers that reach to the sky. But mountain is just a pile of loose waste, which were brought on by giant machines. It has almost perfect cone shape, like every loose structure does. Sometimes those piles have chemical waste inside, 
and sometimes those wastes react with each other, and sometimes they burn, and sometimes explode, and then nerds in white coats scream that they invented a new volcano, and will immediately tell you stories from the crypt. How 200 million years ago this volcano formed those silicon stumps and explain the origin of our streets sidewalk tiles as a result of an ancient volcanic eruption. That is why there's no such thing as volcanoes, rocks, and mountains on our planet. You can throw out these terms from your vocabulary. Okay, let's fly further. So from our window you saw that absolutely all the rocks on our planet are just corpses of the silicon form of life. They are all fallen trees, you want to ask? No, not all of them have ex hexagonal structure like the Devil's Tower. Some of these rocks have lamellar structure or spongy structure like our mushrooms do. Like liver is different from our heart or our lung, so our ancient world was so diverse that we can't identify or even imagine lots of species structure like our mushrooms do. Like liver is different from our heart or lung, so our ancient world was so diverse that we can't identify or even imagine lots of species and subspecies. Let me you know this theme you. was covered in detail by Pavel Olyanov. His YouTube name is Wake Up Humans. He did revolutionary work in the theme of geology and bucket wheel excavations work. Let me introduce to you this giant cuttlefish is a Badger 288, one of the world's biggest rotor excavators. And this is how those machines work. They crawl, crawl on its wheel parallel to the quarry wall. Giant wheels with ladles scratch at rock and ground, leaving concave wall. Geologists must be hypnotized in schools while they are students, because why else would they call quarry waste miracle of nature? Like, for example, this cliff in Australia. Want to laugh? If you do not believe in the idiocy of this last stage, just Google wave rock and check the official explanation. 100% unbelievable how people buy into this. Some people will ask which stone was part of the living plant and which not. I want to tell you that at least 7,500 years ago there were no such things as stones. Everything you find now was part of our ecosystem. But then people said they want to be gods themselves and they screwed everything up. I want to ask you, open your minds. They live, we sleep, but they not only live, they're also killing our planet. They are doing it right now while you are watching this. Wake up humans, you must review all the instruction they gave you in elementary school, middle school, high school. History, geography, geology, open your mind. I want you to look at these photos. Today we have lots of artifacts which we can't repeat because of certain conditions as the lack of technology, lack of equipment, or specialists, and which are evidence that our civilization is 200 years ago and before that compared to us was way more developed and today's society are just kids in the sandbox.
Here are some examples. Bubble of a bath, 1784 to 1820. Here is what this man that was near it tells us. Sorry for my language, but they are let it, telling us absolute bullshit that somehow the master made it for seven years and polished it every day like Papa Carlo. Absolute bullshit. With all my responsibility as a lathe man of fifth level, I declare that this is machine procession. Concave and convex surfaces of this bath, strictly precise, circle on the whole diameter, very accurate spherical surface in the lower part of the bath. Inside the bath on the bottom, the same super accurate concavity of the whole diameter. This product is impossible to do manually, especially to polish. I have the impression that it only yesterday got out of the machine. And the polish is like from Isaac's castle columns. It's impossible to do without high class and high speed polishing and grinding instruments. Next one, Alexandrian column, 1834. Weight is 600 tons, 27 meters high, granite. Impossible to do manually without turning this on a lathe machine. This column has the shape of antesis. It's simply impossible to do manually. Third, Peru Ali Tambo. Polygonal docking of blocks. Weight is 40 to 120 tons. The level of adjustment you can see for yourself. Blocks are aligned in three dimensions. Capella San Severo, made from a single piece of marble. This is impossible to do without an advanced CNC machine. For the last 50 years, there was nothing even close to the complexity of this execution. Nothing has been done by any sculptor, even with the advanced CNC machine. Marble tombstone on the monumental cemetery Strangeleno Museum in Genoa. 6. Stone bridges in Sevastopol. Each polygonal stone of the bridge is essentially a single sculpture. An example of modern work, the stone on the left. By today's standards, it is considered quite acceptable. All cities on this planet were built of stone in the antique style with pre-designed layouts of streets, avenues, embankments, and so on. All cities had a stone bastion wall. The construction volume which is often equal to the construction volume of the whole city. Somewhere between 1780 and 1815, we experienced nuclear war. And it is likely not the first time in the world, which resulted in a nuclear winter in 1816. A year without summer. The Anglo-Saxons called it 1800 and froze to death. Here are some screenshots from Google Earth. Photos of nuclear craters in the territories such as Belarus. Such craters are easy to find. White traces around craters are broken limestone, the basic material of that time. To visualize the damage search in Google, Google Roger Fenton Crimea or James Robertson Crimea and see the pictures and you will see the photos of these first war photographers that were sent to Crimea in 1853 after the nuclear war to take pictures of the siege of Sevastopol. Compare vegetation then and today. This is an example of a photo of Sevastopol by Fenton. Until the 18th century, houses were built entirely of limestone. 
for cutting used were used advanced machines to make perfect parallel pipe heads. Here are some photos of a house in Crimea. All of houses in all cities of old USSR are covered in clay for three or four meters. All houses that are deep in the ground for three to four meters and have such good quality. It takes 200 years and during the Soviet era such masonry of limestone is considered to be very good. This is Eski Kermen. Illiterate guides will tell you that this is one of the cave cities of Crimea where people lived. And when I asked about this track, I was told that this track was done by cartwheels of local nobility. And this is another so-called cave city of Crimea. And this is a modern quarry where limestone is mined. This photo is made before the revolution of 1917. You can see that from the limestone is accurately cut segments, the bottom of which runs the railway and where a house stands. And now a very important photo of Inkerman Quarry, the name Champani, made in 1890. You can clearly see cut passageways through the hill, 100 meters in width and 80 meters high. Under the vertical wall, we can see small pieces of limestone and limestone crumb that fell off because of working saw machining. In the cut holes, we can clearly see houses. Some of these holes are beginning of catacombs, some of which extend for hundreds of kilometers. They conducted a large-scale underground mining of limestone. In the days of the Second World War, in the catacombs were hospitals, warehouses, headquarters, and trucks freely drove in and out of these catacombs. By the way, there are ancient catacombs in any city of the world. Near Odessa, there is a catacomb that is 2,500 kilometers long. Everything they tell us, rocks, canyons, ravines, cliffs, are just nothing more than quarry wastes. And there are very old quarries over there and many fresh ones. This is a white rock in Belogorsk near Crimea. It is a limestone quarry. The wall was formed as a result of the cut slope of the hill. Want to see more? Look at this passage from which a huge mass of limestone was taken. They lie to you. And guess what they call it? They call it the valley. A beautiful wonder of earth. Check this out. This is an old photo from the 19th century. The mound of the vertical walls of limestone chips are not yet overgrown with vegetation. This is an old painting from the year 1855. We can see ancient giant quarry wastes in the background. Are you impressed by the scale of mining in just little Crimea? I want to tell you more. There is no cubic meter of land probably 100 meters deep over the entire earth, which would not have been in its time mined, milled, masticated, and discarded. It is not a planet, but a giant quarry waste pit, where in the most violent and barbaric way, the entire periodic table of Mendelev is extracted. And now, look at these photos and pay attention to the tiered structure of the quarries and mines. The rotor excavated tiered cuts are massive. It is a formed structure with right angles when viewed from above. And now I want to show you the mountains, ridges, gorges, 
canyons, cliffs, in almost uninhabited ways. Often they are named by the people who discovered them. Are all academics and professors of geology and other science nerds too blind to see it? Mountain on the Kola Peninsula. I do not know the name. Mountains on Antarctica that were only discovered in 1820. Antarctica. Here are even the traces of the heavy machines and equipment. Greenland. Watkins Mountains. Look at the scale of the mining. Greenland. The flight from Frankfurt to Los Angeles. Gunbjorn. The highest mountain in Greenland, 3,700 meters. No problem. Almost completely gutted. Svalbard, Norway. Aurora Borealis in the background of quarry waste. Antarctica, Transarctic Mountains. At the foot, the traces of machines are still visible. Antarctica, Transarctic Mountains, Quarry Systems. Pay attention to the background. Mount Kalash, Tibet. The height is 6,638 meters. Have you ever seen in our time heavy mining equipment that's raised to such heights? Goblin Valley State Park, Utah, USA. Gloss Mountain State Park, Oklahoma, USA. Grand Canyon, Arizona, USA. It's just a giant quarry waste, gutted territory. Millions of tourists think that they are looking at a miracle of the world because they were told so. Quarry, Grand Canyon, Arizona, USA. Nowhere can we find traces of water erosion only the shock explosive impacts on the silicon vegetation. Quarry Rock Spitzberg. Quarry Grand Canyon. The cut of the stone with a circular saw. Quarry in Australia. Blue Mountains. Blue Mountains from another angle. Blue Mountains. The vertical wall. Compare it with the marble quarry in the Alps. Marble mining in the apps. Giant quarry, do not know where. This photo is offered as wallpaper on your desktop across the internet. Cap Rock Canyons State Park, Texas. Again, a national park created from exhausted quarry wastes in the USA. In some quarry wastes where there is a lot of moisture, people do farming. But now rice terraces. Again, Banal Rice Terraces. And this is Canyon de Chelly Nation Monument, USA. The saws apparently did tunneling. The so-called Painted Hills in Oregon. Mountains Ravine, South Africa. Orange River and Mountains. Timna National Park in Israel, just a quarry. Quarry Green Canyon in China. Flooded quarry, Charik Reservoir in Uzbekistan. Flooded quarry, another angle. As you can see, there are no natural rocks, mountains, cliffs, and gorges on this planet. You know, while people argue on the internet how flat the earth is, like a pancake, or maybe a little concave, our masters are literally devouring our home and turning into a desert and a scrapyard. Guess what? It appears there are quarries on our planet the size of several countries. For example, in Tajikistan, Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, and Iran, there is almost no soil in these parts of the country because 100 meter layer of soil and all living things on it was removed. 
It looks like the Ural Sea and the Caspian Sea are just giant flooded quarries. Yes, yes, all areas in the world that is painted yellow on Google Maps are the bottom of quarry wastes. Uzgurt Plateau. In the middle of the picture is a group of cars. If you fill this quarry with a layer of water 1500 meters high, you will get an analogy of the Sea of Azov. And this is the Sea of Azov, flooded old quarry. The bottom is as smooth as a table on which rotor excavators rolled. The maximum depth is 15 meters. Perhaps thorium was mined here. The edge of the Karakum Desert, the area of which is 350,000 kilometers squared. The impression is that planetary reapers worked here. In reality, Cory, for the rest of the population, Canyon Yangkala, the wonder of the world, in Turkmenistan. In reality, Cory, for the population, Plateau Tozber, Kazakhstan. USA Monument Valley, USA. Previously, this area was several hundred meters high, up to the stumps of the silicon trees in the background. Same Monument Valley, USA. Namibia, the desert is the bottom of a quarry. Egypt, the top layer is scraped out with soil and all living things on it, also burnt by nuclear blast. Most part of Australia is cut and scraped almost completely. No soil, only red desert left. Australia, Nigeria, desert. The conclusion is deserts are 100% artificial. They emerged as a result of long-term mining activities. Even more, you can easily re safely replace the words canyons, gorges, rocks, ravines, plateaus, mountain lake, and just simple lake in your vocabulary to the words quarry, mine, flooded quarry, flooded mine. Krivobor in Russia. Krivobor in a different angle. In the middle of this island, overgrown with bushes, stood a rotary excavator. Krutevan in Switzerland. Obviously the work of a rotary excavator. Siberia, Anabari Quarry. And now look at this. This is pile of waste rock in Donbass. The height sometimes reaches 300 meters. Inside them are chemical reactions. They burn and sometimes they even explode when they accumulate excess pressure and more. Let me introduce to you this pile of waste called Vesuvius in Italy. 1,281 meters high. But science nerds will tell you that this is a volcano because it is burning even once it exploded. What a story. How people buy into it is beyond me. And now let's look at the biggest pile of waste called terracons or volcanoes. On This is Terracon in Fujiyama in Japan. People, if you think that our masters lie to you, you are still sleeping. If you think that the earth is flat, you are half awakened. We are on a desert and a giant quarry that we are turning into a scrapyard. Since we can trust no one, maybe it's time we think for ourselves. Really think about what you've been told your whole life and question everything.